Okay, Black Lives Matter. What's actually being said? Uh, you see, why are you addressing this topic? Uh, very interesting uh, vision. Had a very interesting vision from the Lord this morning that I'll get into in a moment. So, first of all, do all lives matter? Um, uh, we are not addressing this. I am not addressing this. I'm not talking about this because people are talking about it. I'm not talking about this because people are talking about it. I did a video last night on the 17th of September uh, entitled, uh, 2020 entitled Racism. The, the, the intention of the video was to address what the Spirit of God showed me in prayer weeks ago. I was in prayer and I just saw the word racism. Okay. Let's begin to pray. I was already praying, but I just saw the word racism in all capital letters. I preached about that last night. Having done so, uh, I had a very interesting encounter last night. But that's what, and we'll get into that. So, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. What's being said? When people say Black Lives Matter, what are, what are, what's being said? So, I drive around the street and I see the license plate decal ALM. ALM, all lives matter. All lives matter. And many professed believers are saying all lives matter. So some professed believers are saying black lives matter. Some professed believers are saying all lives matter. Most of the people in the supporting the causes, most of us, most of the people who are supporting the causes are completely unqualified to understand. So, when most of the people say Black Lives Matter, the people who are saying that, most of them are, simp are, are saying don't oppress the poor. It is as simple as that. They're simply saying don't oppress the poor. That's what they're saying. They're saying the government the state government, the city government has an obligation to serve and to protect its citizenry. It is as simple as that. They're saying, do not oppress us just because you have a stigma or a perception of us based on our, based on what you, based on your policing, based on, you, you understand? If the people are valuable, treat them as valuable. And when you respond to their, when you respond to their, uh, to, to criminal activity in their, in their communities, work to bring fundamental change. Don't just oppress and arrest. Don't kill, don't kill people who can't defend themselves. Don't legally label people who can't get out of that restraint. And don't bully, don't oppress. So most people who say Black Lives Matter are simply saying don't oppress the poor. And that's what they're saying. We have to discuss that. And then you have mo and most people who sing all lives matter are saying under no circumstance should one ethnic group be highlighted as valuable because all, all people are valuable. So the all lives matter, most of them, most of them are saying, no, bl black lives aren't the only ones who matter. You can't say black lives matter simply because there are public circumstances, the circumstances that are being made public where blacks are being oppressed by those who are set over them. So the 
So the all lives, most of the all lives matter people are saying, don't highlight a race as important. All of us are important. The Black Lives Matter people are saying, don't oppress the poor because people are valuable. The All Lives Matter people, most of them are saying, don't highlight blacks because everyone's important. The Black Lives Matter people feel like saying all lives matter is dismissive and undermines what's actually being verbalized. Like, you're not getting the, the... We're not saying that everybody doesn't matter. We're saying... We're trying to highlight the oppression of the poor. We're trying to highlight the oppression of the poor being oppressed. In this manner, it's identifiable. Hey, don't do this. Don't do this. But because we're not fighting so uh, people, so the all lives matter, many of the all lives matter people say, uh, the blacks are oppressing each other. You know, they're, they're fighting each other. They're fighting each other. They kill each other. So black lives apparently don't matter if they're killing each other. Jesus said to whom much is given, much is required. What that means is if the poor man oppresses the poor man or fights against the poor man, that's a problem, right? So the people shouldn't fight each other. If they are aggressive and, and ignorant of the truth and lack wisdom, and lack self-control, and they oppress each other, or they fight each other rather, in that lateral way, that's not the same as those who present themselves as stronger, those who have money and power. That's not the same as those who are set over them, treating them in, an, in a hostile way. So it's not the same. Because to whom much is given, much is required. The more knowledge you have, the more stability you have, the more responsible you have to be with that power. That's as simple as that. So that, that, that's as simple as that. That's not... So please understand that most of the people that we are hearing from are separated from God. And so they lack wisdom. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Most High is understanding. So if, you, if you're not in Christ Jesus, then your primary focus is self-empowerment. And so you are not equipped by the, by, the, by the creator to know what's actually going on. There are measures of understanding you can have, but it'll still lead to vain vanity and futility. You'll still fail. The, the causes are going to fail. The people are going to fail. They're going to fail. The country is, is, is unstable. It's going to collapse. And so, the Black Lives Matter people are saying, don't oppress the poor because people are valuable. And the blacks are being subjugated in this particular way. All Lives Matter people are saying, everyone matters, not just black lives. Don't just say black lives just because there's an issue with government oppression. And they're also saying um, the blacks kill each other. Um, and the blacks, Lives Matter people are saying it's a separate issue. So I told you last night that in the dream, in the dream that I had a couple years ago, a few years back, I saw how blacks from the church would get captured by racist whites because the blacks would become focused on race so the blacks that would be and so how they would get controlled by communication evil communication and so 
in a conversation with my wife this morning, I was reminded of the fact that the, the devil is in control of many of, of, of people at various levels. Demons are in control of people. And through their communication, they motivate people to act in destructive ways. They motivate people. So people are being motivated. Youth are being motivated. People are being motivated to behave in aggressive ways. In doing so, the systems of oppression are more active because there's justification. There's justification. The people, the people act in aggressive ways. They are celebrated. Their aggression is celebrated through the media. They celebrate the aggression and then they shoot and jail them for the way for aggression. So they sell, they, they see aggression in certain communities displayed in the streets. They package that, sell that, and then when the people do what they see, because that's what people are designed to do, when they take on this identity of aggression, and lawlessness, then they're jailed by the people who are packaging and mass marketing the ignorance of the communities. So it is a manifestation of a curse. Oh, okay, so these people are experiencing the curse in this manner. Uh, and they're selling themselves. So every hip hop person, if you're okay with rap, which includes the genres of rap, if you're okay with that, then you are a part of the devil's work to destroy man because he's got a different plan for the different groups, the different people groups. God has plans and he delegates the creation. Okay, well, Satan's kingdom will be doing this. They'll fill, fulfill, fulfill the goal in this way. The holy angels are doing that. That's oversimplified, but that's what's happening. And then you have the preachers and you have the regular people. The politicians will do this. The preachers will do that. The prophets will do that. The bankers will do that. The educators will do that. You know, you have that. So... I spoke the message. One of the last things that I... Uh, I spoke the message, the message last night. One of the last things that I, I heard before I went into my bedroom, I had the Bible playing. And I walked into the bedroom, and then I hear the statement in Ephesians, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. And when I heard that, I knew the Holy Spirit was speaking to me at that very moment. So this morning, so that was last night. So I spoke the message last night, uh, September 17, 2020. I spoke the message last night, um, spoke to my wife about it, uh, interacted with the family, went to bed. When I was entering my room, I heard that statement in the hallway because of the Bible. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I said, okay, that's the word, that's, that's the word of the Lord. So this morning, around maybe 6 or 7 a.m., I had this, six, around 6 o'clock, I had this very distinctive dream in this dream i am uh, in this dream i'm i've been invited to this place i've been invited to this place and this is a place where people are being taught how to make money they're being taught how to make money one of the congregants asked me to be there or wanted me to be there because she wanted to know if what if the information was legitimate, if it was a good idea to get involved in this. And so I went there and I sat in the audience as this information is being played over the screen. 
And as I sat there to listen to the information, this heavy evil presence began to descend. This portal, this portal of evil began to descend over me. I felt it. I knew it was greatly evil. It was greatly evil and it was greatly destructive and I felt it descending over me. And as it was, I began to pray against it. I began to pray against it. I began to pray against this powerful evil that was coming over me. I began to pray. Once I got up, I knew that I was suffering that, experiencing that because I had subjected myself to this money-making uh, opportunity. I got up, I got up from there. I'm beginning to leave. There's an older lady there, older black woman there. Maybe in her late 50s, early 60s. She's there. And I look at her, and her face is large, you know, kind of feels. Behind her, things get dark. As I look at her, her face, her eyes turn into cat eyes. To cat eyes. Like the inside, you know, like instead of having regular pupil, or like lizard eyes, like cat or lizard eyes. Like where there's just, where the pupil is not, a circle is just, you know, a line. It was like a cat eye. A cat eye? Yeah. When they're, trying to, when they're trying not to let light in. You know, the cat eye. Or a lizard eye. And I saw that. And I knew I was being shown that this woman had a, you know, not that she was a demon, but that she was a vessel for very strong demon spirits. So I saw that and I began to rebuke her in Jesus' name. When I did that, then she, things changed a bit. And she began to conjure up this Egyptian power, this Egyptian power to overpower me, to attack me. She wanted to attack me with this Egyptian power. And I could see Egyptian imagery and that she was summoning Egyptian spirits to fight me. And I just kept rebuking, confronting what she was doing by the power of Jesus Christ. I just kept rebuking her. I kept saying, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And as I kept doing that, then it, and the power that she had was very high. It was a very strong, very strong measure. She had a very strong measure of evil power at her disposal. And as she was trying to control me by it i just kept confronting her with jesus in jesus name and then at some point someone came who was a part of her company and she was trying to complain to them i wouldn't let her impose this over me and as she would begin to talk to me about her cause and i just kept rebuking her in jesus name and it prevented her from appealing her cause. So a part of the problem, when you attempt, when people attempt to fight evil with self-empowerment, because what are many of the, as the, race, as the races separate from each other, and unfortunately, this will even happen in some of the churches, in many of the churches. The churches where people pay attention to the media are compromised. 
So if you're a person who watches the news and the news determines for you or, you know, gives you your view of the world, uh, unless you're being led by the spirit of God, you are already a slave to Satan through high level witches that are behind the communication scenes that are behind, you know, the people with the money and the power, whether they're European or African or, 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 or Asian, they've been contacted and they're slaves to Satan. That's how they maintain their wealth. That's how they gain and maintain their wealth. And they're making money off of the people who are just trying to survive. Any of us who are just trying to survive are slaves. If you're just trying to survive, you're a slave to Satan because you'll do anything to empower yourself or your children or your your loved ones whether you're no matter what race you are all of the people on the earth who prioritize materialism they're already slaves to the devil jesus said don't you can't serve god and money and so anybody who's, who's trying to advance themselves materially uh, 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 in contradiction to the will of god people who are not conscious of god's will for their lives and who are trying to seek financial empowerment, these people are already, you know, you're, you're, yes, you're going to pay attention to the news. You're going to pay attention to entertainment because that's what you identify with. It doesn't have to focus on Jesus. It doesn't have to be consistent with the spirit of God. You don't even hear. You, you ignore him. So you are subject to just the, the curse that's devouring the planet and from one generation to another. So in this vision, the spirit of the Lord was showing me that people who are, so the churches where people are worldly, they're going to separate. They're going to have problems. Their problems with racism are going to increase because the church doesn't know how to bring order, the order of Jesus Christ to the churches so that it can be a house of prayer to the nations so that anybody could come in there and feel like they have access to Jesus and to the family of God. So there are people who are a part of these movements that are summoning Occult, like demonic power, some intentionally, most unintentionally. When you say Black Lives Matter and your mind behind that is don't oppress people, when that's your mind, God understands that, but your method. Your method of addressing social problems, if you are not being told to focus on that, if you are not submissive enough to the Lord to know what you should be thinking about and spending your time doing, then you can't make any circumstance truly better because we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting demon spirits. And the demons do, do, do operate through people. But you can't... You can't make any... Because the Christian is ordained to control his environment to great, to great degrees. If you're not a Christian, if you're not born again, you are still under the curse of your ancestry. Okay? You are still under the bondage of a, of a mentality and an attitude and a decision-making structure that's going to get you into trouble with God. God's going to do bad things to you. The demons are going to have access to you because you ignore God and you're trying to empower, you're trying to enrich yourself. If you are 
a white person, you need to come out from under the curses on the white people through salvation. If you're a black person, you need to come out from under the curses on the black people through salvation. And know that there are people that are communicating that are in contact with evil spirits and they're that are man that are that have evil their houses for evil power and that as we get closer to the return and the, as we get closer to the fall of america to the judgment of america as we get closer to the judgment of america that these things are going to worsen so only the born again are going to be exempt from much of the suffering because they have a new lineage. They, got, they have a new heritage. I was talking to my wife about this. I wanted her to be, participate in the, the talk and she said, I don't have much to say because it's not something that I really dwell on. I don't think much about, I said, well, and she said, well, how do you know about much of this? I said, well, I don't, except for when I have to accept friend requests or evaluate who my Facebook friends are. And then I might go onto their page and see what they're talking about. And in many cases, it's po politics or social causes. But there are sorcerers that are controlling the ignorant. If you are ignorant and you simply want a problem solved and you are not submissive to the Spirit of God, you can't participate in the solving of the problem. You can't participate in the solving of the problem. You cannot. You can't make things better. Your voice doesn't matter because you've got principalities. You've got high-ranking fallen angels governing the commercial systems. They're governing the political systems, the educational systems systems the the nation is cursed the generation is cursed the people groups are cursed that means bad things are going to happen en mass that's the state that we're in right now that's the condition if you don't believe that your life is going to be an example of that it's you, 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 you don't have to believe that God is in control and is set order. You don't have to believe that. You, you, you are going to, your life is going to be an expression of what's true, not of what you believe. You aren't in control of anything. If you're not submitted to the Spirit of God, You've forfeited your life already. You've already you're already a dead person. You just haven't it just hasn't manifested. So we don't preach because culture is talking. But for those of you that so this message essentially is for those of you who are trying to legitimately want real truth and peace. Hey. Because it's true that black lives matter, meaning it's true that you should not oppress the poor. God will avenge that. Even if the poor are ungodly, those who have power shouldn't capitalize on the frailties of another group of people. It doesn't matter if they're both black, if they're both white, it doesn't matter if they're both Asian. You're not supposed to oppress the poor. 
nor are you supposed to um, nor are you supposed to communicate in a way that would make it seem like only you have value. So if you say Black Lives Matter, meaning don't oppress the poor, you can't say all black men are kings, all black women are queens, and we're better and smarter and stronger. Like, what are you doing? That's just a manifestation of ignorance, you see? You see, you're ignorant. You're being contentious. So you're being provoked to... You are the people. You're, you're just not in power. You are the same people. If you were in power, you'd oppress. Because of sin. It's sin. It's sin and it's demonic manipulation. So... It... The focus isn't Black Lives Matter. The focus isn't All Lives Matter. And um, the world is going to be the world. The, the ignorant are going to be the ignorant. The aggressive are going to be the aggressive. That's it. So for any of us who want to champion social causes and lose our ministries and forfeit the kingdom of God, there's a consequence for that. We know that Jesus revealed that many are going to fall away. Racism is a... Re, is a, is a, is a it's just one of the doors through which people are going to leave the faith. It's just one of the doors. There are many doors through which people are leaving the faith. Some are coming into the faith. And the faith is not going to hurt. The work of Jesus is not going to hurt because you've got people who have abandoned their responsibilities, trust me. Because let me tell you a little secret. For all of you who want to abandon the faith and champion social causes and you want to, you know, pollute your prophetic anointing, for each of you who want to do that, God is not going to take that power back into heaven. He's going to leave it stored for some other faithful guy, some other faithful sister. They're going to get your anointing. They're going to get your anointing. So for all of you who want to start paying attention to the news media and who cops are killing and who schools are not letting in and who's not hiring who and who, and who doesn't want Trump, for all of you who are doing that and you're forfeiting, you got... So that means if you have 10 guys who are, are legitimately anointed and they're, 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 they're rebellious enough to reject the will of God for their lives because they want to champion social causes, don't worry. You're going to have 10 guys who are going to forfeit their anointing and one guy's going to pick up all 10 of those measures of faith. So the kingdom of God is not going to hurt. Less people will have access to it as it relates to dominion. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You have churches that are that, that have kept their, door, their doors shut, not because they're any more afraid of the virus, but because of political, a political stance. You have churches that, sh that could have and should have reopened that didn't because the president said reopen. Oh, the president is saying reopen? Well, we're, now we're not going to open just because the president said, you see? That's a manifestation of slavery. You're a slave. You're a slave to rebellion, slave to the the, the devil, oh, yeah. okay, you just did that. All right, yeah. You you love the devil. You love the devil. You don't love Jesus. So, and you have churches that opened up just because the president said, oh, the president said now we should open. Oh, the president said that he determines whether you open or shut your church. Yeah, see. So there are people who are going to get your your authority anyway. So all of you who are focusing on black issues and you're legitimately anointed. You're not going to hurt the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's going to continue to expand. It's just going to have less people who are in control of it. And those people are going to shine. They're going to shine. They're going to shine. Your emotions are going to prevent you, many of you, from being able to properly adjust to this truth. And that's fine because you've got people who are, are going to follow it. And they're going to get what you are forfeiting. So hopefully that provokes you to repentance. If it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's only going to hurt you because someone's going to benefit from your ignorance. And so my encouragement is that you shut yourself away from vain communication uh, because there are demonic powers associated with it. There are evil powers associated with vain communication. And that's what the Lord wants us to know. We're not fighting people. We, have, we are commanded 
of God to be born again. If you are, if you let the Holy Ghost transform you, and there are various curses that are on your life because of the decisions of your ancestry that you are not going to experience. Various sufferings you're not going to be subject to. Various blessings that are going to open up to you that you otherwise shouldn't have access to because of the decisions of your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, ancestry. The generational curses that you are in position to overcome and avoid and their generational blessings that you are in a position to inherit if you are born again. We need to be born again. We don't want the spirit, the spirits of this generation to have access to us or to, to provoke us to sin so that they have access to us through racial issues or political issues. I know it's emotionally provocative and your heart cries for justice, but if you are not born again, there is no such thing as justice for you or for the world. The world is a, is a fallen place. They're going to eat each other. They're going to oppress each other. But you can shine in the midst of that and you can draw others into the glory of God. You can do that. And that's the will of God. That's the will of God.